Everybody and uh, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, and thrice welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> cool, what a lovely lot they are, Mr. Dick. Fantastic, Basil. Yeah. But you realise we haven't wished them a happy New Year yet. Oh, we haven't, have we? Uh, shall I say it first, or well, will you? Uh, no, no. Let's let's do it together. Shall Jolly we? good idea. All right. After three, right. three. A happy, happy New, New Year. Year. Yeah. Did you hear that, Mr. Yeah, Terry? it's fantastic. Oh, you got a fan? Yes. <laughs> hey, you're getting almost as well known as your jokes. <laughs> now, don't be cheeky. Huh? Now, who are you writing to, anyway? Oh, nobody. Uh, I'm incapacitated. Look. What? Ah, you've got a bad hand. Yes, I've got a poor, sore paw. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> ah, how very kind. <laughs> now, Basil, uh, what did you do to it? Uh, I didn't do anything to it. It was that Jones baby next door. The Jones baby? Yeah. Well, he's only six months old. I know. I put my finger in his mouth to see how many teeth he had. Yeah. And he closed his mouth to see how many fingers I had. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I, I will write the letter for you. Oh, will you really? Yeah. Now, That's uh, awfully kind of you. Uh, <laughs> who do you want to write to? Uh, my cousin Cyril, in reply to a New Year greeting he sent me. Oh, yeah. is this it? Uh, yes, yes. May I read it? You're going to, aren't you? I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Basil, I passed your house on New Year's Eve and saw that you were having a party. Yeah. Why didn't you invite me, you mingy skinflint? <laughs> Yours truly, Cyril. P.S. Yeah. Earwigs and spiders. <laughs> well, uh, what does he mean, earwigs and spiders? Well, he knows I can't stand earwigs and spiders. Yeah, nasty, creepy, crawly things. I see. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, what do you want to uh, write in reply? Yeah. Will you dictate it slowly? I will dictate. You dictate it. <laughs> <laughs> right it. Slowly. Okay, here I we go. Put, um, dear sir, that's yeah. spelt C-U-R. But you can't write that. Huh? That's not a New Year's greeting. I shall put, dear Cyril. Oh, all right. Yeah. Dear Cyril, yeah. I'm writing this letter slowly because I know you can't read very fast. <laughs> thank you for your letter, which was written rotten. And thank you for passing my house on New Year's Eve it was very considerate of you. Now, Basil, you ought to have invited him to the party. Not likely. He can stay longer in one hour than most people can in a week. Oh. Shall we continue? Yes, come on. Right. I hope I see you soon, because there are a few things I want to give you. Oh, well, that's better. That's better. Two black eyes, a belt on the bonce, and a punch-up the Utah. <laughs> Your loving cousin, Basil. P.S. Yeah, and soup and water to you, too. <laughs> P.P.S. I've got a bad hand, so please excuse the shocking writing. Oh, well, that's nice, that is. Huh? You can write the letter yourself when your hand is better. Oh, I hope it's soon. I can't work my gramophone that I had for Christmas. Oh, well, that's a pity. Yeah? Because I've got a new record by an old friend of ours. Really? Yep. Oh, what a shame. Mm. Do it for me. Oh. oh. Go on. Go All right. On. All right. All right. right. OK, yeah. I'll put it on for you. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I can't see who it is by. Look, that's who it's by. What? Who's that nut, Elvick? Who's he? Look, you're reading it. It's upside down. Look, there. Oh, it's Clive Dunn. Yes. Oh, marvellous. Go. Let's take a walk. Tum-de-dee-dum. Hand in hand. Tum-de-dee-dum. Let me show you a wonderland. Take a walk, dum -de -dum. side by side, dum -de -dum. imagination will be your guide. Walk, 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 walk with me, you'll see the things I see. Walk, 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 walk with me. Untold. 
together. Let's take a walk. Walk, 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 walk with me. You'll see the things I see. Walk, 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 walk with me. You'll see the things I see. The world will unfold. Treasures untold. We'll go together. together. Let's take a walk. Walk, 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 walk with me. me. You see the things I see. Let's take a walk. Let's take a walk. Let's take a walk. Down to tea time. It's one of our best assignments. If we make a success of this, the local paper might take us on full time as reporters and uh, photographers. Well, you should do all right at the photography bit. You're always taking a dim view of things. <laughs> Basil? Yeah? I want to have some practice. Oh, yeah? Uh, let me take a few shots of you. All right. All yep. right? Mike? OK. Yep. Well, don't just sit there. Uh, give me a few interesting expressions. All right. Uh, profile. Top of me head. Oh. Shin. Uh, Basil? Yeah? Smile. All right. I've lost you. I've lost you. Huh? What do you mean? You. Where are you? Go! Hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> God. How about that? Watch it. Where are we going for this job, Mr. Dick? We are going to Lord Loverduck's uh, country estate it, yeah. at Blessham. Oh. There's the map over there. Oh, yes. Yeah. We are going to cover his lordship's regimental reunion. Oh. Now, uh, where's his lordship's country seat? In his country trousers. <laughs> Basil. Yeah. Basil. Yeah. There it is. What? There's Blessham Village. Yeah. And there is Blessham Hall. Blessham Hall! Blessham Hall! The long, the short, and the. Give us a new year kiss. <laughs> So, this is Blessham Hall, Basil. Yep. It's a beautiful old building, isn't it? Oh, it's marvellous, Mr. Dick. Oh, it's just like the finale scene in pantomime, isn't it? Uh, I can just see those ugly sisters coming down that staircase. Love! Yes. <laughs> this, this isn't like a pantomime set. Huh? This place is steeped in tradition. Can't you feel it? I can feel a draught. Cool. It's going right up me brush. Hey, hey, hey. You know uh, what? You know what your trouble is, don't you? What's that? You've got no feeling for history. I have. I can feel as hysterical as the next chap when I'm in the mood. Basil, the word is historical. Is it? Not that I expect you to know anything about it, because you came bottom in your class in history, didn't you? Well, it wasn't my fault. They kept asking me questions about things that happened before I was born. Basil, huh? this place was built in 1618, and it's still in its original condition. Is it? The walls, the roof, the woodwork haven't been touched for 360 years. They must have the same landlord as we've got. <clears throat> Basil, don't be flippant. Yeah? This house was built by Charles I. Is he? Yes. He was uh, beheaded. Was he really? Mm -hmm. I can't stand people who are big headed. Not big headed, beheaded. You mean they chopped his napper off? Yes. Ugh. And uh, when his son, Charles II, was king, he gave this house to his lady friend, Nell Gwynne. Did he? Yeah. Uh, now, you see this uh, portrait over here? By Jove, yes. She's a fine looking woman, that Nell Gwynne, isn't she? Uh, that's not Nell Gwynne, that's Charles II. Uh, come to think of it. Come to think of it, he looks all right, Charlie, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Dick, did you see that? Cool, cast iron Cuthbert nearly clobbered me with his dreaded nap chop. There's no, no need to panic. It just <laughs> slipped, that's all. What do you mean, that's all? Oh, I could have been decapitated. Or even worse. Really? Hey, Basil. What's worse? What? Now, you see that portrait over there? Oh, yeah. That's Nell Gwynne. Oh. Now, she was an orange seller at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. Huh? And King Charles used to spend most of his free time with her. I don't blame him. I like oranges, too. Now, he wasn't a bad king. He was on the throne for 25 years. Was he really? All those oranges, I suppose. <laughs> and, uh, 
Who do you think was one of his descendants? Uh, William of Orange? No. <laughs> Lord Loverduck. Ah. A um, gentleman we've come to see today. Ah. I wonder where he's... Ah. This must be the butler. Ah. Oh. His lordship's compliments, gentlemen. He will be down uh, forthwith. Uh, forthwith what? Yes, you see, his lordship was resting after a rather strenuous day, yes. <laughs> this afternoon, he took rather longer than usual uh, to beat her ladyship. Beat her? Yes. Her ladyship put up a very good fight. Yes. Uh, but his lordship beat her in the end. <laughs> he always does, you know. <laughs> oh, Mr. Derrick. Hmm. Did you he hear that? Lord Loverduck beats his wife. He's a baddie. Well, maybe they do that in the aristocracy. I don't know. And remember, Lord Loverduck is a belted earl. If he beats his wife, he deserves to be belted. Come on. Oh. Oh. I wasn't talking about you. Come on. Her Grace. Uh, Lady Loverduck. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Foos, how nice of you to come. Good afternoon, Your Ladyship. Mm. Uh, may I introduce you to my assistant, uh, Mr. Basil Brush? Well, how do you do, Mr. Brush? Uh, how do you do, Your Lady Boot? <laughs> Ship, you fool. <laughs> your Ladyship, you fool. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I made a fox paw. <laughs> I uh, trust your ladyship as well. Mm -hmm. uh, have you got over your bashing? Bashing, Mr. Mr. Brown? Yes, we know all about it, don't we, Mr. Dick? Uh, poor old soul. Uh, shows your bruises. <laughs> we will not ask ladyships to show their bruises. Why not? My father always said, don't hide your plight under a bustle, he said. He meant bushel. Did he? Mm. Well, don't hide your bushel under your bustle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is your friend talking about? I haven't the slightest idea, Your Ladyship. Oh, yes, he has. Uh, I say, Your Ladyship, uh, his Lordship did beat you this afternoon, didn't he? Oh, of course he did. Yes, he's beaten me now every day for the past 30 years. Huh? Sometimes twice a day if the weather's nice. I can't believe it. What is he, what is he used to beat you with? This. Come on. That? Oh, I bet that's painful. Oh. <laughs> Yes, but you see, I, I let him beat me. Well, he looks forward to it, you know. What a funny family. <laughs> but I don't mind, because he really is a very good croquet player. Croquet? Oh, yes, we play croquet every day, and he beats me every game. And your lordship only beats you at uh, croquet. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you for that. <laughs> we thought he, uh, he kept you giving you a good thumping. <laughs> His lordship and I do not believe in physical violence. Yeah. Oh, you could have fooled me. Who's in there, Sooty? Oh. Well, I think his lordship will be down now. Uh, if you'll excuse me, then. <laughs> Lordship to come down now, please. Very good, didn't mm. lady. Now, Basil, remember, when you meet his yeah. Lordship, you must say the right things. Oh, yeah. Now, he is a member of the aristocracy, so yeah. when you're introduced to him, you must give the correct address. Oh, yes, I will. I shall say, hello, my old Lord Loverducky. I'm Basil Brush, 23 Fox Mansions. Uh, my... no, not that kind of an address. When you address his Lordship, you must say your grace. All right, you. Yeah. His grace, Lord Loverduck. <laughs> Been on the cuckoo, you knew. <laughs> this is Mr. Foles, a reporter from the press. His daughter wants a dress. We'll give her an old one of yours in it, be all right. Uh, no, 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 Your Grace. Uh, we're reporters. We've we've come to cover your reunion. Why is it showing? <laughs> well, Henry, you remember tonight your old comrades do. Do they, by God? Oh. After all these years, they've got more energy than I have. Yes. Uh, no, 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 Your Grace. Uh, I'm Derek Foles from the local paper. And may I introduce... Uh, don't forget to say Your Grace. Uh, this is my assistant, Mr. Basil Brush. Uh, for what I'm, I'm about to receive, may I be truly thanked. Uh, How do you do, Mr. Slush? Uh, oh, not a very friendly fellow, is he? Uh, a nice little doggy, though. There's a good chappy. Mm. Dog? I'm not a blooming dog. Uh, who's that over there? With the long nose and the long black hair. <laughs> you brought your girlfriend with you? <laughs> no, no, that's uh, my camera. I've come to uh, photograph your old comrade's reunion. Oh, yes, you know, I wondered why I'd got my uniform on. I'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> Take me dressing out there, will you? Yeah. Hey, uh, good man! 
Where's me Busby? Here, here we are. Here you go, Give me Busby. I'm going to come at you. Here she comes, Mr. Where's he gone? Mr. Derrick, is this a fancy dress party? No, that's his uniform. He used to be in the army. Thank goodness we had a navy. Oh, God! You have good men. You better get some beer because the boys from Chelsea will be here any minute. The boys from Chelsea? That's good. I can get Peter Osgood's autograph. But they're not footballers. Yeah, that's it. The regiment there. Here, look at that. I had to copy so far. Go! Come on, comrades. Forward march. In you come. The reunion party halt. Now fall out, fall out, now fall out. I say, Mr. Dick, what? which one's Fred Carnu? Uh, don't take uh, the mickey, this is the Chelsea lot. Huh? Well, why are they wearing Arsenal colours? Here, look, boys, here's young Mr. Basil. Oh. Well, I hello. Hello, hello, Basil. Mr. Brown, hello, Mr. Brown, Mr. Smith, hello, George. Hello. Oh, well, well. Where did you meet these gentlemen? Ah, when I went to help serve tea at the old age pensioner's love-in. Yeah. yeah. It's a sort of octogenarian rave-up. <laughs> Yeah, he's a, he's a marvellous old gentleman, you know. He's 89. Well, he doesn't look 89. Well, uh, he used to. He's very well preserved. Yeah, last night he was pickled. Henry, I think all comrades should have some refreshment. Ring for yes, Goodman. Sir. All right, I'll, I'll ring for him straight away, yes. I mean, the bell will be all right. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, it's starting me twinges going, you know. It's, it's me lump and bagel. I... Oh, my Uncle Fred gets it. He says it's like doing a Russian dance with spurs on. <laughs> <laughs> well, young Mr. Ballard, here's your very good health, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> hey, do you see that? Huh? Your friend drinks very fast, doesn't he? Yes, he's been like that since his accident. He had a pint knocked over once. Mm. Ah. Mr. Foles, would you like a drink? Oh, thank you. I would like a sherry. A sherry, young man? That's a woman's drink. Here, yeah, have a pint. He couldn't drink a pint of sherry. God. When he eats trifle, you can't stop him from singing. <laughs> Sir, Sergeant Major, uh, where's Sergeant Tallboy? Isn't he coming this year? Oh, Tallboy will be here, sir. Good, He'll good, be here. Good, yeah. good. Another one of your regiment, Sergeant Major? As a matter of fact, sir, he's, uh, he was the tallest man in the regiment. Oh, yeah. That is, until we got posted to Africa. Oh. Sergeant Tallboy, me lord. Sergeant Tallboy reporting, sir. Tallboy? Oh. Well, he used to be six foot four, Mr. Basil, you see. Yes. Until the regiment was billeted in an African village and he called the witch doctor a silly old fool. Yeah. <laughs> He's never been the same since. Oh. Look at him. <laughs> Get back in the love. Hey, yeah. you must have faced many dangers in those African campaigns, Your Lordship. Oh, yes, we have, young man. Yes, especially in the Sudan. <laughs> oh, I see. Look at little Lofty. He must have hollow legs. <laughs> Would you like to pinch of snuff, Sergeant Major? Well, that's stuff. very civil of you, sir. Thank you very much Here indeed. Yes. I do like a pinch of yes. now and again. Yes. It clears the... Here, gentlemen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Battle, sir, would you like a piece of stuff? Oh, thanks very much. Guys, <laughs> oh. oh. have you put stuff all over the place? Huh? Uh, your Lordship, don't you think I'd better take the photograph before it all gets uh, too hectic? Yeah, take one of the group first, will you? Then I'll have one taken on me own in me bare skin. In his bare skin? <laughs> Mr. Derrick, you can't take a photo of his grace in the nutty. Now, everybody. Lord Longford will be livid. Uh. Everybody, say cheese. Gorgonzola. <laughs> that would be a good one, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, sometimes, Mr. Battle Russia, sometimes people think we all want to sit and getting the time together and chatting over old times like this, but there's uh, nothing like the good old days, really, is there? Oh, yes. For one thing, it's a darn sight cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the good old days, at the turn of the century, all the glory like to see a military belly of the soldiers on parade. For chops was all they paid. And if your sister came home late at night, a good light should be. Whenever danger.
danger threatened, they would face it with a grin. And the boys were overworked and underpaid. Oh, yeah. really? All really? we got was a shilling a day. Yeah. 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 But they always did their duty. Yeah. Rolled their sleeves up, got stuck in. Yeah. They were the boys of the old brigade. Werewolves, ghouls, ghosts, can such things be? Give me the moonlight, give me the girl, and leave the rest. <laughs> Marvellous puppets. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful, Mr. Derrick. It's like being in politics, isn't it? Well, how, what do you mean, like being in politics? Well, you never get anywhere unless somebody pulls a few strings. <laughs> somebody pulls a few strings! <laughs> Did you get it? Yes, but I don't think I want it. Now, belt up. Ooh! Well, there's no need to get your shorts in a shamozzle. <laughs> You're not like this when we're toasting crumpets together. Now, Basil, look, I've got this story to read, yeah. and I want to read it without any interruption. So, please, from now on... Yeah. I don't want to hear another squeak out of you. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, where was I? Was that you? Ah, uh, don't worry, Mr. Dick. It's only my little Marmaduke. Your little what? Marmaduke, my, my, my pet mouse. He's under there. Under where? <gasps> hey! What? Watch your language. You mustn't mention underwear on the telly. <laughs> You'll have Mrs. Lighthouse after you. Look, I didn't mention underwear. I was simply asking where your mouse was. He's under there. Hello, Mommy. God. <laughs> Mommy? Yeah. That's short for Marmaduke. Uh, look at him. He's starving. I bet he's dying for a nibble. Well, he'll have to wait. Huh? I've got this story to read. Yeah. The Further Adventures of Basil the Buccaneer. Yeah. Now be quiet and listen. In last week's episode, the Sea Fox was approaching the port of Georgetown when suddenly a thunderous roar of cannon fire came from the fortress overlooking the town. Stand by to turn about, shouted Captain Basil. Of us, there, ye lovers. I see. I say, I suppose you haven't got an old piece of cheese in your pocket, have you? Cheese? Yes, or a bit of bacon rind will do. <laughs> Little Mom is doing his nut. So am I. Why, are you dying for a nibble as well? I'm not dying for a nibble. <laughs> I'm trying to read this story. Now, will you please pay attention? And will you please stop that mouse from squeaking? What do you expect me to do, oil it? <laughs> come on, come on. Raising his spyglass, 
Basil immediately countermanded his order. Yeah. As you were, Mr. Cramp, yeah. shouted the captain. Yeah. Steady your helm. They aren't attacking. That was just a welcoming salute. We yeah. still have friends in this part of the world. Friends? Firing brewing great cannonballs at them? With friends like that, you don't need any enemies. Good. May I, may I, may I continue? Pray proceed. Thank you. Indeed, Captain Basil had a most influential friend in Georgetown. Yeah. No less a personage than Sir Gerald Milcom, yeah. who had been appointed governor of the colony after a distinguished career in Parliament. Oh, my little Marmy's uncle's in Parliament, you know. Isn't he, Marmy? There you are, you see. A mouse in Parliament? Yes, he's the squeaker. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard of the Mouses of Parliament? <laughs> Mouses of Parliament! <laughs> Oh, uh, come on. You're telling Basil. Eh? You're telling fibs. It's not a fib. It's true. Well, who told you? Little Marmy did. Didn't you, Marmy? But you see? My Marmy did tell me. But will you wrap up? Ooh! <laughs> There's no need to get your knickers in a twist. But can you blame me? Can you blame me? A little discipline. That's what you want. Discipline. Uh, now, if you were in Captain Basil's crew, now, you would have got it. Would I really? Yep. Yes, you would. And you know what they get for insubordination? No what? The cat. <gasps> you shouldn't mention that cat in front of little Marmaduke. Oh. Look at that. You frightened the life out of him. Oh. Look. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody's sympathetic anyway. Uh, look, he's turned pale. The poor little mate is white with friends. What do you mean? He was, he was, he was white in the first place. Yes, and now he's white in the second place as well. Uh, <laughs> you might at least apologise. I apologise. We accept your apology. Oh. Come on. Basil was looking forward eagerly to renewing his acquaintance with Sir Gerald's beautiful niece Mary, oh, yeah. whom he had met at a ball in England a year before. Get away. Yes. He smiled to himself as he, he pictured her entering the ballroom yeah. in a magnificent gown of gold lame. Oh, gold lame. Oh. <laughs> With four attendants to hold up her train. Hold up her train? Male robbers? No, not male robbers. They were ladies. Oh, female robbers? Ladies in... <laughs> ladies in waiting. Oh. It was with a light heart that Basil leapt onto the quay from the longboat I and greeted by key. a lieutenant yeah. of the garrison. Yeah. Sir Gerald Milcombe's compliments, Captain, said the officer, and his apologies for not greeting you in person. And I see how fast the clock off. <laughs> He's organising a search for his niece. Yeah. We fear she has been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Kidnap, said Basil. Yes, I did, didn't I? Cool. <laughs> Kidnappers are baddies. Yes, baddies, yes. Yeah. Fancy going around napping little kids. Let me your horse, Lieutenant, said Basil. Huh? I must get to St. Gerald's house immediately. Yeah. Certainly, Captain, replied the officer. Certainly. You know the best way to Milcombe House. Yeah, yeah. First, you need a very low stool. <laughs> <laughs> Milcombe House yeah. is where Sir Gerald lives. Oh. Yeah. I beg your pudding. Right. Come on. I've oh, been there. I've oh, been there before, said Basil, and springing into the saddle, urged his steed into a gallop. As he sped along the jungle road, almost yeah. blind with anger, yeah. he failed to see the thin rope stretched across his path. He did. And in a flash, he did, and in a flash, was hurled from his mount. Caught! To land, winded and half unconscious. Caught! He was breathless and pantless. Yes. As he... <laughs> As he staggered to his feet, yeah. a villainous-looking man leapt from the undergrowth yeah. with a huge, iron-studded mace in his upraised hand. Huh? That's all we've got time for this week, Basil. Oh, we've got that, but, but someone's going to bash him on the bonds with an iron mouse. No, not mouse, not mouse, mace. He's got more than one. Oh, that's even worse. Listen next week to another thrilling episode of Basil the Buccaneer. <laughs> Basil's at the mercy of a villain with a mace. He's going to knock his block off, and that isn't very nice. Can the captain beat him? Yes, he'll put him in his place. Villains used to tremble when they heard his name. He had to get to Milcombe House to save his lady friend. What a turn up. It's enough to drive him round the bed. No matter what the odds are, he triumphs in the end. And everywhere when, when they heard his battle cry, he was a brave, brave man. Buccaneering battle, a pirate born to see. As a privateer, he knew no fear, he sailed the mighty sea. Again, again, on the road he made, his enemies would fly. When they saw his skulls and crossbows and hurled his case, battle.